What's up YouTubers? This is JDreamers coming at you with another video. I wanted to start this video off by asking you guys a question. Do you know why the days of the week are named the way that they are? Well, um, here's a picture right here of an example. This one happens to be of German origin of something I'll go over real quick with you. So let's start with Sunday, which in case in case you didn't know, Sunday is actually the first day of the week. I mean, you could look on any calendar and Sunday's right there at, in the number one spot. For some reason, we think that Monday is the first day of the week, but I guess that's the first day of our work week. But Sunday is pretty self-explanatory. It's the day of the sun. It's the day that we named after the skylight that circles around our flat plane. Um... Monday is actually comes from the moon in various other languages like like uh, French we'll say French it's lundi or lunar day so Monday is moon day the day of the moon so we have the day of the sun followed by the day of the moon now the next day is actually named after an ancient Norse god named Tyr and it's per, it's spelled T Y R, but it's sort of pronounced like T O O almost today. Tiu. So this is the day of Tiu or Tuesday. The next day. Now, have you ever wondered why Wednesday is spelled so strange? Like it's spelled Wednesday. Why? Well, it comes from something. It comes from Woden. It's the day of Woden. Or, without the W or the double U sound, it's Odin or Odin. Odin's day. Woden's day? Odin's day. And Odin is a Norse god um, who is sort of father figure to Thu and to our next god in the lineup Thor or easily enough Thor's day the day of Thor Thursday so Friday comes from one of the female Norse goddesses it is the day of Freya's Fry Frey Freya's day Friday the last one is kind of up for speculation, but Satur could be the day of the Satyr. And the Satyr is a, um, he's the pan figure. He's the half goat, half god that plays music on his little pan flute. Um, but a lot of people think it might be Saturn, the Roman god. Saturn, a.k.a. Kronos, the god of time, and um, he was also a father type to many of these other gods. He was also the father to like, he was one of the titans or giants in ancient, <coughs> ancient mythology. So that's the days of the week, and that got me into a segue about the gods of old, the giants, the titans, the gods of old. Um, did they really exist? Did the gods of old really exist? Um, we have so many things in our world today that we don't even realize are named after ancient gods or giants, or titans. Um, I mean, look at many of the car companies alone are named after many of these ancient gods. Um, even if it's named after the sun god. Um, for example, I'll give you guys one. Um, Acura, right? Comes from an ancient language, and it's pronounced Akura. Akura, or Ahura. Akura, and there was an ancient god actually named Akura Mazda. We have another car company, Mazda. 
anyways, you could do that all day long with all the so many companies and corporations. Um, but these gods in particular that we name our days of the week after are mostly from Norse legends. And in Norse legend, or from the Eddas, um, the gods... Uh, this is hard to explain, but basically like the gods who live in the realm above us were known to traverse and to come down to our realm and to other realms, especially, most notably in ancient lore, the realm of the giants. And the giants were constantly battling against these gods in the upper realms. Now the gods in the upper realms were known as the Asir, or it's spelled A-E-S-I-R, but it's sort of pronounced O-Z, Azir, the Azir. And the I-R at the end is basically plural, but the Az. And now the Oz reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. So the Wise One of Oz. So let me let me th let me show you a picture real quick of the Wizard of Oz, um, or at least the Land of Oz, because I thought this was kind of interesting, right? Here's the here's the iconic picture. Now look at this. This is the Emerald City, right? Look at the shape of this crystalline structure rising up from the ground, almost broken looking at the top. And then it goes back down like that. Now, is it just me or can you guys possibly see how that might look like one of these ancient megalithic trees? I'm seeing it everywhere now. Um, another thing off to the side is like we have these cliffs right here. For some reason they decided to put these cliffs and they're all white with the exception of some green on top. And then we have this what looks like snow off to the side. And I'm getting this theme a lot in various places where people have to traverse the cold lands to get to this sort of you know, mythical paradise, crystalline place, or what have you. Um, so maybe this represents like the ice wall. I'm not sure. I'm just throwing that out there. But this Oz thing definitely to me looks like a giant ancient silicone tree. And I found that uh, often I'll run across these crystalline structures in movies or, you know, television shows, what have you. And a lot of times they're depicted as green for some reason. Um, let me show you another picture here. This is from the one of the original movies of Superman. I watched it when I was a kid. Basically, Superman is this god or godlike being with super strength, super, you know, you know who Superman is. But he comes to our world or our plane of existence and he decides to take this little crystal that his um, his father and all – okay, ho hold on. All the people from Superman's world, for some reason, many of them, have the word L attached to them. Superman's father, his name is Jor-El. Superman's name is Cal-El. Well, L, at least in the Bible, means or implies – a godlike being or a powerful being anyways that's a side note um so superman takes this crystal now look where he goes he's up here in the arctic regions antarctic regions he's traversing through these freezing cold areas he throws this crystal it goes in and the crystal grows and it forms into this what's known as this his fortress of solitude but it's basically his little paradise and this is superman's home and he goes into it and he actually uses all these various crystals um, to gain information because these crystals store a wealth of knowledge inside of them 
So this is Superman's home. I thought it was interesting because it's kind of similar to, you know, the Emerald City, Superman's home. And then another thing I thought was interesting too is this is Atlantis. I mean, can you see that same sort of broken structure there? On top of having a dome over it, and as you can see, the waters are flowing in through the background over here. Um, I do just put things together. I just want to sh throw that out there. Like I'm, I'm reaching out into the ether, to the energies around me, what have you, and I'm, I'm pulling out things that all that that seem to have a similar, a similar uh. Well, they, they seem to be related to one another. <clears throat> so, yes, I'm speculating. Yes, I'm using my imagination. Um, yes, we've been lied to. And all of our knowledge of who we are, where we come from, where we live, what has happened before, what's going on, it's all been burned. It's all been destroyed. So, why not use my imagination? You know what I mean? Why not? find little breadcrumbs and little pieces here and there that all seem to be interrelated and start trying your hardest to put them together to make a picture that makes more sense than the broken picture that we've been presented of of all things today let's see what else oh here's another one of atlantis i like this picture the atlanteans they had they uh i don't know if you know this but the atlanteans in folklore were famous for having these crystals and the crystals were throughout their city some are very large um, crystals and they had a sort of technology and a spirituality that blended together and worked with these crystals somehow and they understood that crystals carried energy and carried information and that you could actually program crystals um, through thought and through spirit and so I think that that's where a lot of us to today who are into um, crystal energies and the energies of various gems and stones and things like that I think that's probably where this comes from now let's go back to uh, let's use this picture let's go back to the giants of old, the titans of old. Now, come on. Our world is just full of this, of these breadcrumbs and puzzle pieces that point to there have really been, there having been, been, giants or titans or godlike creatures. Now, before you jump on me for, you know, saying many gods and things like that one day i'll do a video about my understanding of of who what i believe god is i don't really like the word god that much but i'm not talking about a the one that is all things that is god as i understand god i'm talking about higher beings okay because there seem to be higher beings and lower beings but it seems to me that yes there were titanic beings. There were titans a long time ago, if not still today, just maybe not on our realm currently, and perhaps on various other realms. And there seemed to be plenty of evidence to support godlike beings or supermen, like Superman, superhuman, super extraordinary beings compared to us today at least and I'm not minimizing mankind because I believe that we also have that inside of us but we've been affected by many things throughout the ages so I also think that we humans today we used to be much bigger and we were taught otherwise that you know they show us pictures of uh, knights from a long time ago and they, they try to say that we were so small and now we're getting bigger and now we're getting taller. I think it was the exact opposite. There's been ancient stories of of men from a long time ago who have outran leopards or cheetahs, who have crushed rocks with their bare hands, who have scaled high walls and mountains in a single bound. So just some stuff I'd throw out there for you guys tonight.
That's what's on my mind. Have a good one.